I bow to all the seekers of truth. As I have been telling before, we cannot conceive the idea of truth. It, is, it cannot be a conception of human beings. It has to be felt on your central nervous system. As you can see me with, with your eyes and can feel me, you should be able to feel the truth. There are many wrong ideas prevalent about the truth, <coughs> but all the great incarnations, all the great prophets have said that human beings have to jump one more stage in their awareness, understand the truth. This jumping or this breakthrough is a living process. We've got our human awareness through our evolution, spontaneously, effortlessly, through a living process. And to go further with it, it has to be a living process which acts spontaneously. As we have not paid anything for our evolution as human beings, we cannot pay for anything that gives you higher life. There can be no courses about it. It's the built-in quality within us, like a seed which sprouts by itself. We don't make the seed go through any courses, nor do we make it stand on its head, nor do we pay any money to the Mother Earth because she is giving us such a lo lot of beautiful nature. But it is not being understood so far by human beings that God is not for sale. Nobody has business to earn money in the name of God. And the God's work is a living work. It's not a dead work like making uh, some buildings or anything else of that kind. The living work of God is to give Self-realization to people. They have to be given the power of their spirit which resides within them. If this power of spirit is not manifested in the human awareness, then we can say that the evolutionary process is still incomplete as the desire of every flower would be to become the fruit. It should be the desire of every human being to become the spirit. But we find human beings are lost into another type of pursuits, pursuits that do not give you any joy, they do not give you any purpose of life, they keep you on a very mundane level of existence. Slowly and steadily human beings are realizing that now they have created a world which is like a big shock. Nobody knows what is going to happen to this world which was created by the Divine for a very great purpose. But people do not want to budge out of their mundane living and mundane understanding of life. But there is a category of people who are aware of this life which is not yet complete and are looking forward some, to something that is beyond. But perhaps they do not know what to seek. They do not know what is awaiting their seeking. They are going into all kinds of ways and methods. Any book that is published becomes a Bible for people. Every book is not a Bible. 
Anybody can take a pen in the hand, write something and publish it and also <coughs> give some sort of a authority of science to prove that that is the best. But which science is complete? Like people write books about foods, this should not be eaten, that should not be eaten, that should be eaten, that should be eaten. And they do not see the health of the person who has written the book. That person may be overactive because that person has paid more attention to food to the right side, but must be person who lacks softness, tenderness, kindness. The variety of books that we see on the shelves should confuse everyone. The less we read would be a better idea. Now within our slice, the brain, as you know, which has got one thousand petals, according to Sahaja Yoga. So some doctors came to fight with me, it is not one thousand and nine hundred and eighty-eight nerves, but maybe two you might not have seen. Now whatever is said by Sahaja Yoga can be proved. So it comes to you as a hypothesis and this hypothesis is to be accepted as a hypothesis first and then is to be verified if it is true or not. But from the very beginning one starts saying, oh, this is all no, uh, knowledge, no knowledge or something like that. Then how can you tell the person what is within yourself? The refusal to know anything means people are unscientific by temperament. They don't have an open mind to see for themselves and they have no courage to see for themselves. For example, if somebody puts up a shop for spirituality, people think it is rather secured because it is secured, they feel it is secured. Now, they think that if He cheats us, we can put Him to the courts. It is better to go to a person who takes money than to a person who doesn't take any money. Now the dilemma is this, how much are you going to pay your Kundalini? She is your own, she is your mother and she wants to give you your Realization. So how much are we going to pay her? You can't pay me because I'm just a catalyst. I'm just a catalyst. It is your Kundalini, it is your, your own spirit and it is your own ascent. But as I say, this is the knowledge of the roots. We have the knowledge of the tree, but the trees must have the knowledge of the roots or they will become like this without any leaves and after some time it will die. Now to reach the roots we have to be a subtler being and all the arrangements are made within us to be that. Even psychologists like Jung has talked about it. He got his Realization but he did not know the full knowledge about it. So he says that we have got the uh, unconscious is at the lowest point, which is Kundalini perhaps. Then on top of that he thinks is the collective uh, subconscious. Then he says there is also uh, above that is subconscious. Then is the conscious mind. Because of this little mistake, people think that if you go to the subconscious, you will reach the unconscious. But it is not so. You can see here, in the center is the ascending road. As you have paid, put a central path for Me, I don't have to jump over you or go through you to come here. And God is the greatest sensible organizer. So the left-hand side, at the extreme left-hand side, you have got your collective subconscious which is built in you from your very creation. Next to that is your... next to that 
is uh, your subconscious. After that, we can say, is the present subconscious, the present subconscious. Now, after that is the present, which is the center. Now, if you start from the right side, we can say at the extreme right we have collective supraconscious and then we have got the supraconscious and then we have got the conscious mind which is the present. Now on our nerves, on our nerves we have got the effect of our subconscious mind and oh. collective subconscious mind. Also we have got the effect of the supraconscious and the conscious mind. So all that is dead since our creation. The since evolution. we were just matter, then animals, then human beings, everything lies in the collective subconscious. And in the subconscious lies whatever we have been conditioned with. Like now I am born in India, <coughs> so I am an Indian. You are born in Holland, so you are Dutch, like that. This is all a conditioning. But actually we are human beings. All human beings smile the same way, cry the same way. So first of all we have to be human beings in the purest sense. <coughs> so the conditionings from the left side have to be dropped out. But if you fight with your conditioning, they do not drop out. New habits are formed. Like the young people felt that it was too much to wear uh, traditional dresses, so they took to hippies, say to anti-culture. <coughs> then anti-culture became their conditioning. They could not get out of it. Now if they take to something else, then it becomes their again their conditioning. And human beings like to carry brands on their heads. They will be materialist or they will be communist, they will be capitalist, there is something is they will be. What about being a human being? If you are a human being, then all these things exist within you. Whatever brand you may wear, all these centers are within you. Now only the residual power of Kundalini has to rise. I must tell you also today, because I am here only for one day, as a result of Self-realization what happens? First and foremost thing happens that many incurable diseases get cured and you never get again sick. Second thing happens is that many people who want to be creative, they become very creative and have a creativity flowing into them. Many people have the technique, but they do not have the creativity. And the power of creativity starts flowing through the second center of Swadhisthana. By the first center, a person becomes innocent. What Christ has said, thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. Those innocent eyes Deja. get the light in their eyes the light of innocence, and such a person has no lust or greed in the eyes, but such a powerful eyes of love that even a glance of such a person could cure you. Even a glance of this person can give you peace and all the auspiciousness to be bestowed upon you by that glance. In a sense, we have lost, but it is not dead. It is there existing within you. It's like a moon covered with the clouds, but it exists and it gets awakened and enlightened when you get your Self-realization. Into the another center when you approach the third center of Nabi, your material problems get solved. You become a satisfied soul. You don't cheat people. You become honest. There are ten valencies within us. Every human being has got ten valencies. 
while carbon has got four valencies. All uh-huh. these valencies are actual the inner religion within us. Now people talk of religion. You ask somebody, they'll say, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Sikh. But they can murder people, they can steal things, they can tell lies, they can do whatever they like, like a Satan. And they think they belong to a religion, but the religion does not belong to them. The religion is so superficial. And that is the reason why many people have discarded God. Um, it's nothing wrong with God. It's wrong with the people who profess that that they follow God. Here they are following a Satan and saying that they are following God, then what can you do? It is just a lip service people are giving. So the religion within is enlightened and such a person becomes extremely joyous. He enjoys his virtues and his righteousness. He enjoys his honesty and generosity. He enjoys his straightforwardness. He is rid of all the fears. You can see in the life of Christ, when Mari Magdalini was stoned, was to be stoned, he had nothing to do with women of that kind, was to be stoned. He stood up before her and said that whosoever has not committed sin can throw a stone at me. That is the fearlessness of a great soul. So the fears disappear and physically the problems also stomach are completely removed. Above all, you become your own master. No habits can dominate you. We have seen people giving up their habits even of very serious drugs overnight. It's like this. On my sari, say there's a black spot and I'm blind, I can't see. So anybody says, you have a black spot on your sari, I'm not going to believe it. As I am identified with that black spot, I'm not going to take it out either. (coughs) But as soon as my eyes are open, I see it and I clean it. I've been speaking continuously (coughs) for the whole month. And somebody smoking here, is there somebody smoking? Please don't smoke, please. Thank you. You can go at the back and smoke it. Are you smoking now? No. It's all right, thank you. What do you say? Please don't smoke. <coughs> so you drop out all the bad habits. That's the best thing that can happen to human beings, that they become so powerful. Once you get your habits, you have no willpower to drop it. You become weak and you start justifying it. But when you become a very strong personality, you love yourself, love your being, and you don't want to harm yourself at all. All those things that are harmful to you, you just drop out because these are self-destructive things. But before realization, if I say that you should give up your bad habits, half of you may walk off. So the first thing is to give you realization. (laughs) If you get your realization, then there's no problem, I don't have to tell you. You automatically do it. Now the Another thing that happens to you is very important is by the center of the heart, which is the center (coughs) from where the antibodies are created, the antibodies to fight the diseases, to fight the foreign matter, to fight anything uh, that is destructive. That's done till the age of twelve years. Then all of them spread in the whole body and wait for orders from the center heart, below the sternum bone. Now when you get your enlightenment in that area, the messages which are given are empowered. So whatever messages go, 
they are empowered and they make a person so powerful that he does not easily contact any disease. <coughs> Say like AIDS now. Uh -huh. Sahaja yogis don't get AIDS at all wherever they may go. Like cancer is curable in the early stages because a person gets a balance, most of his physical problems are over. But the greatest boon of this center is that such a person feels extremely secure and peaceful. Above that is the center of Vishuddhi Chakra, this one. This is the center of collectivity, where a person realizes that he is a part and parcel of the whole, that he is belonging to the whole. Like this hand is serving this hand, is serving itself. At the Vishuddhi Chakra, when the Kundalini comes, you start feeling the cool breeze in your hand. And the power which is all pervading, you start feeling. But <clears throat> when the Kundalini even crosses this, but is not fully opened out, then you don't feel in your hands, but you get your Realization all right. Such a person develops a, a beautiful face, very sharp eyes, nose, ears, and very dynamic brain. He doesn't think so much, but ideas start pouring into his head. When he, the Kundalini crosses over this chakra of Agya, this is the chakra of Jesus Christ, which is a cross. Both the sides of the cross you see your conditionings and your ego on the left-hand side, as you have seen, goes to the right side as the blue uh, conditioning and the right side goes to the left as the ego, as yellow, like bile. Both these ego and superego, the conditionings, the sacs are sucked in. When the Kundalini pierces through the chakra of Jesus Christ and you become thoughtlessly aware. There is no thought. If you want to think, you can think, but there is no invasion of thought upon you. You develop a witness state, witness state. You start seeing the whole thing as a joke or a drama and then you solve your problems better. Supposing you are in the water, then you are afraid of the waves, waves of thoughts. But supposing you are in the boat, then you can enjoy the waves very well. And on top of that, you solve your problems better, you can see them clearly. But if you become the master of swimming, then you can jump back into that water and can swim it and enjoy the waves. Now the Kundalini enters <coughs> into the one thousand petaled Sahasrara, it's the brain. And those, if you have seen the transfer section, section of a brain, uh, it looks like as if a flower, a lotus flower has been cut. So every nerve has got an aura like a petal and when a nerve gets enlightened, all these petals get the beautiful light of different colors. <coughs> they look like flames but very silent and very gentle, flames that give you cool breeze. Then the Kundalini uh, crosses the fontanelle bone area you start feeling the cool breeze coming out of your head. Kundalini is the Holy Ghost, is the primordial mother. And cool breeze of the Holy Ghost you can feel clearly on top of your head. That is how you get connected 
with the all pervading power of love of god this is real yoga not standing on your head and breaking your necks you become a beautiful person a dynamic magnetic personality you get completely integrated there's no quarrel between your heart and your head and your attention actually this is what you are like this instrument is made to be connected if you do not connect it to the mains it doesn't work that is the situation of human beings so this happening is the second birth of human beings this is the second birth and the second birth is given to you by your own mother individual mother your own kundalini she is very anxious to do it and so far i have seen those who come to sahaj yoga assiduously all of them have got realization maybe in one day you may not get that mean you might get also but you have to settle it like one light which is enlightened has to be first looked after till it is steady and the maturity is reached then nothing can disturb you you become the master you yourself can raise the kundalini of people you yourself can give them good health you yourself can give them joy and happiness there is such a lot of glory and beauty within which has not yet manifested you must just allow it to manifest is a very simple method and i'm sure it will work out tonight so may god bless you all now if you have any questions you can ask for such little time because we are a little late already she has a kachan ali chakra she said i know you been to some guru no i was uh, drugs i was so old no i was so old by myself so hum yeah oh. a lot of situations <laughs> that's the wrong thing very wrong you see sit down sit down i'll tell you uh this kind of mistake we always do unless and until you are connected and if you start saying some mantras it's like spoiling your telephone without connection you must logically get connected i'll correct it don't you worry all right in no time what else in no time so translate it only person we cannot help are the obstinate ones they also join in later on when they see others are having a nice time <laughs> like adam and children you see yes please just get up get up please if you don't mind yes so you can wake up kundalini by tantra see is a wrong idea please be seated <coughs> by tantrism you can tan tantra means the instrument and when people say tantrism they are doing just the opposite what it should be done for example if you have a car and if you take out the wheel and start moving it will it move tantrism is just like that is to take out the wheel and start moving it there are all kinds of nonsense they do the worst thing they do is to put dirty habits into you by mesmerism or something the worst thing they do is to tell you that kundalini can be risen by sex act now all the animals to sex act are they going to get their kundalini awaken now if you see it clearly the kundalini is placed in the triangular bone and there is the chakra of innocence which manifest 
the pelvic plexus within us is called as the muladhar chakra it looks after all the excretion of the body now Suspension. it is placed below the kundalini not above the kundalini so when the kundalini has to rise it doesn't has to it doesn't have to go to the excretion side on the contrary when the kundalini is rising the excretion stops automatically the whole thing is called as urdhvagati means going upward the attention goes upward so the sex has nothing to do with kundalini awakening she is your mother and the mother which is the purest of pure purity is the quality of kundalini because she purifies you if the soap that purifies you is not pure how can you be purified so tantrism was accepted by the west much more than by indians indians don't like the word because they promised uh, they will uh, they will grant a kind of a uh, evil control on people they also put spirits and do all kinds of things go and uh, see the lives of the tantrikas you will be shocked what is the pur- purpose of kundalini awakening what is to become godly to be purified by getting into gutters how can you become purified it's a logic one may claim anything but claim. what have they shown moreover those who go to tantrikas are really doomed people i have had very bad experiences of such people and they have suffered a lot physically mentally and materially so don't go near them they are just money makers in india anybody can come from jail wear that kind of a dress and walk about saying i am a tantrika and in germany he goes sits on a square and all the germans are at his feet i mean wow. even there are people who give horrid mantras like there's a guru who gives for 300 pounds a mantra called inga 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 means inge or inga means uh, what you call the um, the scorpion's sting and all other uh, such stupid words which are accepted by western people because they don't know what it means and they are not allowed to tell anyone it's a big secret very very big secret because if they tell this to indians they'll be shocked mostly such people are sorcerers they call themselves tantrikas but they are sorcerers they are anti christ and are fake and false people the purpose of kundalini is to make you godly and if that is not achieved it is not a kundalini awakening but some sort of a horrid experience like one fellow had blisters round his neck up to here on his back and he said my kundalini was awakened by somebody from kashmir who has written books this gentleman himself is leading a horrid life it is when people try to do all these things to the kundalini she doesn't do anything but in the center is sitting the deity of innocence who gets angry and all over the sympathetic nervous system on the left and right the heat flows tremendous heat and that heat makes a person shake they Did shake their hands and say these are vibrations not only that but they mesmerize because people cannot see their good they stick on to wrong things and suffer in india we know them better than you people know recently one of them was arrested in madras who was very friendly with uh, uh very rich people of iran rich people of um uh, uh united arab league can't understand how these muslims have taken to him they all get exposed one by one all of them that's the good point about them and they quarrel among themselves that's the second point and third point is that all their disciples become so weak and useless that they can't do anything with them they all become recluses so one should not worry about them actually sajogi is the one who is the master of the tantra 
is the master of the instrument. You can come forward because some people can move in. Just come forward, little bit, little bit, come forward. Yes, sit down. Also you can come this side, it's very cold that side. The lady should can sit on the carpet, please, madam. No, you are all right. I'm saying for the other lady, can you sit on the carpet, please? It's rather cold there. What's it saying? I can't hear. Now, the first thing we must know when you go to some guru or somebody, does he take money from you? All right. Then secondly, how is his own life and character? Thirdly, does he talk of Self-realization or not? Fourthly, you must see his disciples. Have they got any power or not? Can they give Realization to others or not? What sort of life they lead? Are they lost people? This is the Guru. But when you have your Self-realization, you start feeling it on your central nervous system, the all-pervading power of God as cool breeze. Now this is described in all the shastras. It is described in all the shastras. It is described in uh, by Adi Shankaracharya as salilam salilam means the cool cool breeze. It's described in the Bible as the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. It's described in the Quran as asas. Is described in Sikh religion, in the Zoroasters, that the God's all-pervading power is like a cool breeze. Also we know that when we say you become a Christian, you are baptized here, that much they know in the church. Even the Hindus have a kind of ceremony that you are born again. And the Muslims and Jews, all of them have. But it's an artificial ceremony. Nothing happens when the priest puts the head on your hand on your head. But as soon as you get the spiritual experience, you feel extremely cool, calm and beautiful. And as you allow it to grow, you understand the value of your Realization and value of your Personality. Like supposing you give me some Dutch money and I don't understand what is this, I'll have to go to the market to find out the value, isn't it? In the same way, when you get Realization, you have to try it on others if you can give them Realization or not, if you can work it out on them or not, all right? Dus de vraag is, deze jongeman die krijgt een beetje benauwd in de grote stad en die weet niet of die hier nou moet blijven en dat hij no, 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 no. You see, uh, like a lotus is born in the mud. Yes, yes. And there are lots of worms and things and then the lotus comes up. And many lotuses come up and they become so fragrant that the worms run away. That is how you have to be a lotus in Amsterdam. <laughs> and here, you know, they cut diamonds, and Sir Yoga will make beautiful, brilliant diamonds. Do Don't be that disheartened. <laughs> the question is, can you start giving realization? <laughs> you can always come and stay with me. All right. Uh, could yes. You, could you tell something about the work of the United Nations? What's this? He says, he says, could you tell something about the United Nations? Not <laughs> <laughs> uh, You know my husband, is it? Do you? I'm sorry? Do you know where he is posted and all that? My husband is just one of the Secretary Generals of United Nations. Let him not say anything. No comments. <laughs> but those who talk of peace have no peace within. Those people who give Nobel Prizes, Nobel Prize, this noble company is making all armaments. 
giving prize to our people in India. Giving Nobel Prize. Prize for what? Another is United Nations. It is united but not integrated. And there should be some people who are realized souls who can do better. Maybe it might happen. What she said? Yeah, he says that first you get your realization and afterwards you have to work about it. He says, what exactly do we have to do? Ah, that will tell you. That's correct. You have to work about it means, you see, when the Kundalini rises with a force she goes up, all right, crosses over, but then you have problems, say physical, mental, emotional, so she attends to that. And if you know how to reduce her pressures, that's little bit you have to learn. In a month's time you become an expert. So it's not working out so much, just understanding yourself and others. Just understanding. You don't have to work with your hands or anything. Just you have to understand what is the problem with me, why the Kundalini is not moving out. For example, now you have a problem here, Vishuddhi Chakra. So how to work it out is to be just understood, that's all. It's nothing much to be done. Like, uh, I would say, uh, your problems you know, but some problems you don't know what are there within yourself. And they start manifesting, you start seeing them. Uh, you have to understand how to remove those problems. And for that you have to come to the center and ask them, <laughs> I've already told you, madam, that they don't get AIDS because they have powerful chakras, the heart chakra, which produces antibodies. And these antibodies get the power to fight the AIDS, so they don't get it. And they don't indulge into bad habits also. Now it's getting late, so should we now have the realization part? It takes about ten minutes. You have to take out your shoes for the Mother Earth to help us, help us a little. Those who do not want to do it can go because, uh, you see, you cannot force it on anyone. Uh, you uh, also must know that when others are doing it, it's not civil to sit down and watch others. Now, to begin with, I'll tell you how we have to start our Kundalini also and how we have to remove the obstructions. Please put your left hand towards me like this on a very comfortable way, on your lap, on your lap. It will work on your lap. Put both your feet on the Mother Earth parallel to each other. Those who are sitting on the ground need not put their feet like that. They can sit comfortably. Not for the people who are sitting on the ground, they can sit comfortably like that. Putting left hand towards Me it symbolizes, symbolizes that you are desirous of having your Self-realization because this represents the power of desire. Now, the right hand is to be used for the action. So we have to release our different centers so that the Kundalini can rise easily. Now please all of you put your left hand towards Me. All right. Now you have to use the right hand for the action which will release or which will dilate your centers. First of all, you have to put your right hand on your heart. You can put it through your coat, would be better. <laughs> now, in the heart resides the Spirit. Below that, if you move your hand, 
all on the left hand side, you put your hand in the upper part of your abdomen on the left hand side. Now, this is the center here, here. Put your hand on the left hand side of your abdomen in the upper part. Madam, you do it on this here. It's flak under the rib. That's yes, good. All of you. All right. Now, this is the center of your mastery. Now, again you put your right hand in the lower part of your abdomen on the left hand side. Now, this hand you have to again take back on your heart. On the left hand side on the of your neck and your shoulder in the corner. Now you place your right hand and turn your head to the right. This is called as left Vishuddhi center and is uh, now obstructed in many of you because you feel guilty. You have to be pleasantly placed towards yourself. Please forgive yourself. Now, take down your hand and put it on your forehead across like this and press it on both the sides. This is a very important center. Now you take your right hand on the back of your head and push your head to rest on it. Lastly, you stretch your hand. Push back your fingers and in the center of your palm, Place it on the fontanel bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now, move your hand slowly, clockwise, pressing your scalp, pushing out your fingers seven times. Good. Now, Please close your eyes. You are not to open the eyes till I tell you. Also remove your spectacles because your eyesight improves. Today is the only day I am here, so do it from your heart so that you all get Realization and be pleasant about it. Forgive yourself. Now, please Put left hand towards Me, both the feet on the Mother Earth and put your right hand on the heart. Here you have to ask Me a very fundamental question. You have to ask Me three times if you want to call Me Mataji, Shri Mataji or Mother. Mother, am I the Spirit? Mother, am I the Spirit? Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question. Three times. Another question follows with this one. If you are the Spirit, then you are your Master. Put your right hand on your upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and ask Me three times, Mother, am I my own master? Ask this question three times. Please now bring your right hand in the lower part of your abdomen on the left hand side and press it. Here is the center which does all the divine work. 
according to the divine laws. Now I cannot cross your freedom. I cannot force on you. So please ask, Mother, may I have pure knowledge? Please ask six times because this center has got six petals. As you ask this question, the Kundalini starts and gets awakening. Now take your hand to the upper part of your abdomen on the left hand side and press it. Here with full confidence, please say ten times to open this center, Mother, I am my master. Ten times, please. Now you have to ask the most fundamental question, which is the greatest truth about you. Actually, it is a statement it is of a... confidence. Please raise your hand to your heart again. Now, here you have to say with full confidence the greatest truth, Mother, I am the Spirit. Please say it twelve times. Mother, I am the Spirit. Please say it twelve times. Now you have to know that God Almighty is the ocean of love and blessings. But above all, He is the ocean of forgiveness. And you cannot commit any mistake which His power of forgiveness cannot completely absorb. Now, please say it twelve times that, Mother, I am the Spirit. Now lift your right hand in the corner of your neck and your left shoulder and put your head towards the right. Here, please, Say it sixteen times. Zephi. Mother, I am not guilty. This is the worst chakra today. You are not guilty. You are not guilty at all. Ah. Please say it sixteen times. Now, raise your hand and put it across your forehead and bend your head a little. Now press it on both the sides. Now here you have to say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Some of you might feel that's difficult, but it is a myth whether you forgive or you don't forgive. If you don't forgive, then you play into wrong, wrong hands. Now please take your right hand on the back side of your head and put the load of your head on this hand and push your head upward. Now here for your own satisfaction, you can say, O oh Divine, if I have done any mistake, please forgive me, but don't feel guilty about it or don't count your mistakes. Say from your heart, 
not how many times. Now, stretch your hand and put the center of your hand on top of the fontanel bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Please put the left hand towards me and sit straight. Now, press the scalp slowly seven times, but I cannot force you, so you have to ask seven times, Mother, may I have my Realization? Mother, please give me my Realization. Stretch your fingers, move it with pressure seven times clockwise. Slowly. You can bend your head, would be better. Now, please take down your hand. Slowly open your eyes, put both the hands towards me. Open. Watch me without thinking. You may put both of your hands towards the sky and ask a question to me, saying, Is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost Mother? Is this the Brahma Shakti? Or ask a question, is this the all-pervading power of God's love? Ask three times. Now, please bring down your hands. Now, those who have felt the cool breeze on top of their heads, or even hot, doesn't matter, means it's opened out, by Putting your right hand towards me, does you see if you are feeling the cool breeze, right hand like this. Dus je voelt met de linkerhand. Bend your head. Above your hand, not on top of your head. Bend your head, you'll do better. Kunt u beter here, here. Not very far, not here. Here. Now, now. With the left hand towards me, put your right hand. Some people get it very far. Now, again put your right hand towards me and see if you are getting the cool breeze or even a hot breeze because some people have heat so it has to come out. Now, please. Those, you can put your both hands like this. Could Keep your eyes open, like this, towards me. Oh, Those okay. who have felt the cool breeze out of their heads or on their fingers, please raise both your hands. Good! So many of you have felt, you didn't feel? You didn't feel it? The cool breeze? Warm. Huh? Hot, hot. What you say? Hot. It will go away. It will go. All right. Ask Mother, give me cool breeze. That's all. You have to ask. If somebody has not felt it from his head, you can say, Mother, come in my head. Just say it three times. I am at your service. All right? It's coming now? All right. Good, I'm at your service. <laughs> Ask for anything, demand anything, I'm there to help you. Again, let us see how many of you have felt it, hot or cold. 
All of you who have felt, please raise your hands. Oh God, all of you practically, except for very few, please put down your hands. Those who have not felt, please raise your hands. There are very few like that. But maybe you have some physical trouble, maybe you might have been to a wrong guru, maybe you might have followed a wrong path, or maybe there's some sort of a mental problem you have. Yes. Doesn't matter, you all have to come to our workshop where it will be worked out. And I'm sure this Amsterdam is going to be a beautiful place for all of you. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Look after your Realization, respect your Realization, respect yourself. Didn't get it? You didn't get? Got it? Good? May God bless you. What about you? Got it? She got it. <laughs> All right. So may God bless you.